For now, let's get right to some low beta opportunities. Doug Flynn joining us, co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management. It's always nice to have you on nice to see you. the show where we can talk about some of these different types of opportunities. So everybody just loves to run to the high flyers or the fang stocks or right. just one sector, but you use your own way of investing. What are you looking at? Well, you know, when the market's sitting close or at its all-time high, I tend to take a step back and say, you know, maybe there's some opportunistic themes out there that uh, have a little bit less risk than the high flyers. When the market's lower or off, then I'm, I might go a little bit more higher beta. But uh, I would tend to lean more towards lower beta stocks at the high, if you're going to add. All right. So, and you have some examples for us today. But before we get to that, you're, you're talking about the interest rate picture um, and that it really is somewhat pointing to recession, right? Are you concerned about that? I, I'm, if you look solely at interest rates, they're, they're priced like we're going to a recession. But you can't just look at it like that in a vacuum. I think some people do do that. If you look at it with equities, equities are priced like we're going to go into the next growth phase. Right. And, and actually, if you look at the equity risk premium, which is something that if people don't know what that is, they should definitely look into it. Uh, it basically compares the price of stocks relative to the, to the price of bonds. And we're at a three-year low on that relative basis in terms of the stock uh, stock market and where it's priced. So that bodes well for future growth in the market. It says it's not we're not overpriced. Okay, so <clears throat> it doesn't mean just because what we're seeing in the in the interest rate picture doesn't necessarily mean recession because right. you're you're looking at valuation mm -hmm. rel relative to everything exactly. and, and then you figure it out. Um, so some of the names that you liked include AMC and Vodafone. Right, so those um, are on the communication side. Yeah, why? Well, each of them has a little bit of a different story, but the theme here, and all, all of the stocks that we're talking about today have a beta of less than one, which is less than the market, less volatile. Okay. Um, a, a number of them have really healthy dividends, and virtually all of them have gotten just completely beat down uh, this year for different reasons. So AMC is the first one is a good example. Uh, in May and year to date, the, the movie revenues, which they're the, the largest... Uh, the movie theater chain uh, right. in, in the world, um, in, in the United States, they're basically uh, taking a look at what happened year to date and with the, with the ticket sales down, completely got annihilated in May. So those are your entry points. You don't want to buy it when it's screaming high. A lot of people make that mistake. You yeah. want to buy the, the stock after it's run. I mean, the chart is not a pretty one where we exactly. see that big dip <laughs> down. I mean, That's right. Um, but the so, dividend on that is now over 7%. Right, so, and that's a nice dividend. So that's an opportunity now if they don't cut. And I think, you know, if you look at the backlog of what's coming out in the theaters the rest of the year into 2020, this ties into that. You could have a swing back as that revenue mm -hmm. picks up. Nice. And you have a few other picks. A, th a thought on Vodafone? Sure. Vodafone is, uh, well, worldwide, they're a leader. But what I like about the most is that they're in, they, they have big places into the emerging markets for, for delivering communications, right. which is one of the things, themes that people want to want to take a look at. Also beat down a little bit, but um, a dividend yield of over 6% as well. So those are the themes there. CVS has been an interesting story. I mean, obviously a behemoth in its business. Sure. Um, your thoughts on this one, which also has a, a nice dividend, I think. It does, a 3.5% dividend. To me, this is the, the reason why it's, it hasn't moved is because the, the, their outlook they put out has been terrible. They're basically right. saying a flat outlook. So you're being paid to wait, if you think about it, relative to Treasury bonds at 2%. This is a 3.5% yield. Right. You might not see much in the way of growth this year. But next year, as, as a lot of the things that they've uh, put together kick in, you, you see the move that that, that could take. And that's the largest... Uh, the largest chain in the United States for for uh, for drugstores. Do you do you like the fact that they've been beaten down? I mean, the, when you look at those charts, I mean, it's mm -hmm. clear that they're well off their highs. They've been exactly. you know pummeled, uh, but it's a good entry point. All of these things are ones that, if you look at the 52-week high versus the 52-week low. When do you want to buy them? Well, some right. things deservedly should be at their 52-week low. But right. if something's sitting there at the, for the, at the moment and you saw what its 52-week high is and the prospects are good for a number of reasons that you can peel back and do a little research with, yeah. that's the opportunity. And those are the entry points. That's what we look for. Tell us about Centene. So Centene, you may remember I, I had mentioned it a couple of weeks ago when I was on, and that uh, is one that basically provides health care plans. It's the only one on the list today that actually has made money in the last five years. Everything else has lost money. So, But the future growth, as o they bought a couple of firms, rolled them in internally and externally. When that consolidates and, th and those uh, cost savings kick in, 
has a real opportunity. Medicaid payments, they're a big recipient of, and those are going nowhere. So uh, a lot of growth opportunity in a stock that has actually done pretty well in the last couple of years as well. So I'm not here to just bring good charts that look good the last five years, although this is a good one. Uh, we also want to bring some opportunities that may, may be more future in, in terms of where the growth is. What are you watching in the next week or two? I mean, we're basically seeing how uh, earnings are going to come out. You saw UPS with uh, some, some great news today. And we are very excited to interview the CFO yes. coming up. Thank you for that. Yes, very good. Um, that was also one of the things we talked about two weeks ago, and I, and, I, and I spoke very specifically about it when the stock was around 101. So I'm really happy about that. So some of those things we're looking for, the things that we've been, been looking to do, we want to hear more detail on. Boeing, I want to see more about what they're going to do right. with the del delivery of the, uh, of the, you know, what are they doing fourth sure. quarter into first quarter. Those are the and things. Fed and jobs. All of that's always. on the lineup. That's All right, Doug Flynn, co founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management. Nice to see you. Thank you. you. Too. And coming up,